Hi, Denise Naylor here, and welcome to News Views. Today is Friday, the 19th of January 2018, and there's a couple of big items in the news recently that I believe could have major implications in the financial arena. First one is the liquidation of Carillion PLC, Public Limited Company. Now, those of us old enough to remember, this company was known as Tarmac. And that gives you a clue. Yes, it's a massive construction company. Um, in its latest annual report, which was to 31st December 2016, the company turned over £5,112 million. Pounds. That's sales turnover. Very, very large company. And if you look at the annual report, and I always recommend people go to the website of the company, go up to the investors tab and read the original report, don't rely on the news, you'll see that the company was in fact profitable and the balance sheet was signed off by the directors and by the senior statutory independent auditor who is Richard Housen, I'm so sorry, that's the CEO, Peter Meehan of KPMG, um, Limited Liability Partnership, that was the senior statutory auditor who signed off on the 1st of March 2017 on their December 2016 results. And remember that as part of the sign off process, at the very last moment, the auditor and the directors have to have a meeting and they have to agree that they have no information or knowledge that could impact the company going forward, going concern. So they got a clean report, and you know, between the uh, May, which was when the annual general meeting, and the end of the year, something has happened, and the company is now in liquidation. It's difficult, Matt. It's difficult business running a large company. I'm not trying to say it's straightforward. There's a fair bit of chat on the Institute of Directors website at the moment. Um, full disclosure: I'm a member of Institute of Directors. Um, about, you know, the position of the directors. Remember that every director, executive or non-executive, is legally responsible for the company. I think we are probably going to see some changes in the law that will clarify directors' positions. But in the immediate moment, if you look at the website of the company, Carillion PLC, you'll see a statement that tells the official receiver has been appointed liquidator of Carillion PLC and other companies in the group. Special managers have been appointed by the High Court to help manage the business to act as agents of the company. So the legal system in this country, in the UK, very strong, very quick to act when needed and has indeed acted. So obviously it's bad news for employees and suppliers to the company but at least action has been taken there are people now managing the company the company will continue to trade and uh, we'll have to see what happens but as i say i wouldn't be at all surprised if we don't see changes in company law i think really it's about time that we did companies now are so large they're so interconnected in our society that i believe shareholders suppliers customers creditors deserve much more protection than the law currently gives. Secondly, this week, we had a very interesting talk by Silvana Tarello, who is a member of the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee, and she spoke at Queen Mary University of London on the, on the 15th of January, and she was talking about what's known as the productivity puzzle, uh, which is we, essentially it means we all feel we're working harder and harder, but the official figures show that actually our productivity is not growing in the UK as fast as it is recorded to be growing in other countries. And that's what the point I want to make here, recorded. You see, I think the world is changing. Lots of things are happening now that the statistics don't measure because statistics are still built around an old fashioned model. They look at the corporate sector. They look at manufacturing, finance. Of course, all these things continue. But here's one example. This week, I had an insurance issue at a prop one of my properties. And now, I could have appointed my surveyor to go and inspect the property, 
to carry out negotiations with the insurance company, to make all the phone calls, and do all the paperwork. That would probably have been about a day's work and would have cost me some hundred pounds. And that would have shown up in the productivity because there would have been an invoice from my surveyor to me, I'd have paid and it would be showing. But in fact, what happened was I chose to manage it myself. I went up there myself. I wanted to meet the people who are living in the property. I had some other things to discuss with them. And in the end, I handled it all myself. So that doesn't show in the productivity figures. But would you agree with me? That work was done. That's economic work. That's part of productivity. So I think, again, especially with the internet economy and with a number of other things, uh, changes with technology, people using technology, and much more people being much more hands-on, as I've just described in their own businesses, the barter economy. There are lots of things that are not measured. Now, economists are aware of this, but of course it's difficult to measure these things. So we'll see again going forward. I think if we're going to have a sensible debate about statistics, economic statistics, we do have to have a discussion about the new economy and what's really happening to people. So just a couple of things there for a bit of reflection. Remember, I always advise go to original sources, make your own mind up, read the documentation, don't necessarily listen to soundbite that's there on the media. And uh, have a great week and thanks for listening. Do join me again.